Joining us in conversation today is Dr. Gautami Virakun, one of the only three lacrimologists in Sri Lanka. Hi, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. All right. <laughs> so let's begin uh, by talking a little bit about you and your beginnings and how you got into lacrimology. So it was 2000, year 2009, I first started studying lichen um, for my PhD, which I did in Sri Jayavadanapuri University under the supervision of Professor Chandrani Vijayaratna and Patricia Woolsley from the Natural History Museum, London. And uh, after I completed my work, I was invited by the Field Museum of uh, Natural History, Chicago, to do a postdoctoral research. So I had the opportunity of studying worldwide lichens then, not only Sri Lanka. Uh, now I am the senior curator of lichens and slime molds in the Natural History Museum, London, where I did part of my PhD. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to lichens, I, I am a specialist in tropical lichens. Uh, uh, so I have worked in many Southeast Asian and South Asian countries and also associated a lot of tropical lichens from South America and Africa as well. So recently I was in Vietnam studying their lichens. So uh, lichens are the most fascinating thing and it fascinates me more than anything on the planet Earth. <laughs> Sounds like an incredible journey. So let's talk about what lichens are and what, how, it, uh, how you were drawn to them and why you wanted to study them. So, very honestly speaking, when I was looking for a PhD opportunity, that was the only grant that was available in Sri okay. Lanka. So I would say that, uh, so I had to grab the only opportunity that was, uh, but very uh, little attention was given to Sri Lankan lichens in that time. I had to start from scratch and uh, it was challenging. So more challenging the work, I like it better. <laughs> so I think uh, it was a good choice at the end. And uh, now I, uh, feel that my work is more challenging because I get hundreds of specimens sent to Natural History Museum from many other tropical uh, countries, not only from Asia, all over tropics. So the work becomes more challenging. Uh, long hours in the lab, but I enjoy it. So um, I'm most thankful to Sri Lankan government, especially to University of Sri Jayavadanapura, for their uh, funding given to me as a very young PhD student and all the other international uh, institutions um, for the funding they've been generously given to me since 2009. So I think it is the secret for this long journey. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can't work alone because uh, it's a very few people working on lichens all over the world, less than 200 uh, specialists mm -hmm. in the world. So we work with each other, we have a lot of collaborative projects and then we join our hands when it comes to uh, difficult specimens and all. So I think all these things, that, that, is, that is why I am doing this. Most definitely. Yes. What exactly are lichens and what kind of types are there? So lichen is actually more than one organism because mm -hmm. uh, uh, lichens are made with uh, one or two fungi mm -hmm. uh, living together with uh, algae or cyanobacteria, sometimes with both algae and cyanobacteria. So fungi are the dominant partner in this association mm -hmm. and cyanobacteria or the algae produce the food for the, the fungi. So I would say that it is not definitely a mutualistic association, <laughs> but it is kind, kind of a control parasitic condition. Actually fungi are the world number one farmers because they knew how to farm cyanobacteria and lichens to make them food actually to get the food from them so i would say that they are the most ancient farmers on the living earth all right very exciting <laughs> now let's talk about the diversity of lichens in sri lanka and what types are there that you can see? So uh, we have all sort of lichens in Sri Lanka. So when it comes to lichens, uh, there are three main categories, crustose, folios, and fruticose lichens. All three groups are found in Sri Lanka from seashore to mountain uh, tops, actually up to Pidru Thalagala mountain wow. from the sea line, coastal line. So 
even in your own backyard on your gate post there could be lichens mm -hmm. and the lichens growing on the roof tiles and your glass windows and granite monuments so that those are the urban lichens that you can see but when we go to tropical rainforests uh, such as Singaraja or Kedi and you can see hundreds of lichens in them and then sub-montane and montane regions of Sri Lanka are very rich highly diverse and uh, from the time that I started I have recorded more than 870 new uh, lichen species in Sri Lanka and have described over 100 new species to science only from Sri Lanka. So the total number of lichens that we know from Sri Lanka is now over 1,200. That's crazy. <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure that once we study all uh, categories like lichens that are living on soil, the lichens that live in on trees, and then other man-made structures, and we have very specific uh, type of lichens called epiphyllous lichens. That lichens are growing on rainforest leaves. That all together they could easily outnumber the uh, number of flowering plants in Sri Lanka. That number of flowering plants in Sri Lanka are th uh, 3,250. Lichens can easily outnumber that. <laughs> so I think uh, nearly 4,000 lichens could be found in Sri Lanka. Uh, so Sri Lanka has become, I'm very proud to say, the number one hotspot in South Asia. That's very cool. <laughs> So you, I take that you have been working with Dilma Conservation to protect these lichens? Yes, I'm most grateful to Dilma because Dilma is my local funding agency and they have been funding me since 2014 uh, and together with the National Geographic Society, the funding I got from them, Dilma joined their hands so we could study the lichens in Sri Lanka and Dilma also published the first field guide where I'm the author uh, to Sri Lankan community so it is the f the only guide available in Sri mm -hmm. Lanka we have 150 common lichens photographed with their details on this field guide and Dilma has generously distributed a lot of free copies to the universities high schools and other regional library yeah. that's quite incredible yeah. yes now is there a way in which lichens actually contribute towards the ecosystem and why as common people Sri Lanka should uh, t uh, learn to study them and kind of protect them so the main thing lichen is the number one bioindicator in the world. Mm. So although we don't use lichens as bioindicators to monitor climate change, habitat destruction, forest de depletion, climatic change and other things, that the lichens are effectively used as bioindicators all over the world. Mm. So because we have oldest living lichens recording from Arctic and Antarctic region that have lived over 3,000 to 5,000 years. So these are the number one uh, good indicators to monitor climatic change to so the global warming and ozone depletion and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, then lichens produce their own unique chemicals. So the lichen chemicals are very effective uh, in antibiotics, mm -hmm. anti-cancer, as anti-cancer agents. So if we are looking for new uh, medicines to treat some of these dying uh, diseases, I think they are within the lichens and we have very promising results uh, what the, the collaborative project that I'm doing with the Kalani University Professor Priyani Parnagama and her chemi uh, chemistry students so already we have identified many new compounds from Sri Lankan mangrove lichens and we are testing them against human cancer cell line mm. and I'm, I'm happy to say we have very promising results so not only us but all over the world, many different uh, biochemists are working on lichen compounds. And the lichens have been used by et et ethnic groups for hundreds of years, especially Himalayan communities, uh, as medicine, food, herbal tea, and also some of the uh, very expensive perfumes we are we uh, wow. wearing. So the, the stable stabilizing agent is produced by the lichen chemicals. So although we have not paid much attention they've been with us we've been living with the lichens <laughs> sounds quite incredible now i'm pretty sure all of us sri lankans would love to hear more about lichens you are conducting a wnps lecture do tell us where we can come and hear you talk yes yeah, so wnps uh, has invited me to give a lecture uh, on 13th of december at jasmine hall 
um, 6 p.m. in the evening. It is free for members and non-members, uh, so free entrance actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is going to be one and a half hours lecture. So the topic of the lecture is living with the lichens. Right, there you have it folks. Do be sure to go and check out Dr. Weary Cohen's talk on Living with Legends at the WNPS lecture. Thank you so much for joining us today Dr. Weary Cohen. I wish you all the very best for the future. Thank you very much.